When I bought Nimbus, the force day was integral with the old further unit. So when I replaced the force day, I replaced the further unit at the same time. And after some voyages and bad experiences with the in-mass fuller, I replaced that and uh, eventually replaced the main soul and Genoa. Nimbus had a symmetrical spinnaker, but no other uh, asymmetrical or wind sail. What I really wanted was a furling Code Zero, which would allow me to go up wind and light winds and also deploy two head sails for downwind. The only problem was I had no bowsprit and no money to buy a furler unit, so I had to improvise a bit. And when I say no money, I mean I wasn't prepared to pay the cost of a, uh, a production um, continuous line furler unit. How anyone can justify the cost of a few bits of aluminium and stainless is beyond me. I mean, don't feed the bears. A further unit is half the price of a brand new engine, unbelievably. So armed with some aluminium tube and some deck fittings, I set about making a bowsprit. The aluminium tube could be slipped forward uh, in use and uh, retracted to get it out of the way when mooring. I used two loose-fitting U-bolts uh, and a, a pin to hold the bowsprit in position, which allowed it to slide forward and backwards. The U-bolts need to be tacked at the right height to allow them to bolt it down securely to the deck. And I intended to build the fill around the old head pivot swivel. So here's the cunning plan to make um, a continuous line furler which I intend to use my code zero. This is um, what it looks like in my mind, um, translated uh, using a 3D CAD program. And I've based it around bits that I've got lying around. Um, the main component is uh, the old head swivel from an old Furl X unit that I took off Nimbus, um, not used anymore. But it's, uh, uh, and the, the plan is to keep this part stationary and to attach uh, a drum to this part to make the continuous line furler. I also have got some uh, 304 stainless exhaust pipe. I think it's used on trucks kicking around, which just happens to fit around a piece of nylon. So those are the bits I've got to play with. Um, so, so far I've turned that into this, which will go which pushes down, and this will be the, uh, the stationary part. And this part will be rotating. So that part is this part. And, and I need to make a drum, which will fit with this, fix onto this part snugly. Um, this will go around the outside to keep the line controlled. And then I just need some exit rollers. So these bits I've already made. And I got these plates laser cut. And these are just stainless. Um, Stainless tubes, chop to length, to access spaces, so there's five of those. One, two, three, four, five. And that will go something like something like that. Anyway, that's the work so far. So you can tell the house of a sailor we've got the little oil suction pumps, which I knew help get the oil out of the engine. A little spaniel. Big boxes of uh, stuff to be eBayed. And in the lounge, we've got a dinghy work in progress, haven't we? 
We like dinghies, don't we? Yeah. Uh, dinghies and in the lounge, GRP tools, plywood, haven't we? So, a bit of grinding later. of further. So the only part missing is the actual drum where the continuous line goes on, which is uh, going to be fitted where my finger is. And this has a sort of V pulley shape, which uh, which allows um, gives enough friction. When you pull on the rope, it'll turn the drum and uh, whatever is attached to the drum. So here's a view, a top view of the finished filler. The central black drum you can see rotates and you can see the control lines. This is a view from the bottom, so everything you see in this view uh, is stationary, it doesn't rotate. There are drain holes to allow sand and dust and water to escape. And here's the unit fitted onto the bowsprit. You can see the attachment to the bowsprit a bit clearer. Uh, there's a, there's a, a D bolt going through into the anchor locker and some quick releases so they can reach down from deck and uh, attach or disconnect the, uh, the bowsprit easily. So you can see the control lines attached and also the, um, uh, the code zero itself. I've had all my sales made by Jekylls. Um, I've had very good service from them. Uh, they um, designed, made and delivered my new Genoa in three days. So I was very happy for them to design and make the code zero for me. Here's the Tinky project finished. And you can see the control lines were further on deck. Uh, the, the single continuous line with, um, with an end-to-end -end splice, uh, which is very easy to do. Uh, so pull, the, pull one, end, one, one end of the string and it, uh, it fills the unit up. And pull the other one and it deploys the sail. Very, very straightforward and very little friction. The, the filler is um, attached to the sail and the torsion rope is sewn onto the luff of the sail so it's dead easy. Uh, I just clip on the spinnaker halyard and haul the whole filled unit up. <clears throat> so um, when I'm ready to deploy the sail I just pull on the control lines and ditto to, to drop the sail. Um, it's easy enough to uh, just drop the spinnaker halyard and collect the sort of furled sausage into a into a bag and just unclip the whole full unit and it gets stowed away in one uh, in one bag when the winds forecast to be light and the you know is dropping and appearing disappearing it's very convenient to have the code zero um, hoisted and ready for action and, and literally it's seconds you can have the sail up uh, or sail in within seconds uh, it makes it makes life so much more comfortable and of course when the wind's light you, you not need to worry about the added windage with the, the sail left up there. You know it's ready for action when the wind picks up a bit. And if the wind becomes too strong you can just drop the whole lot on deck dead easy. Now we're just heading off uh, on a test sail to uh, test the Code Zero. We're, we're going down to Aberystwyth. It's uh, about a 90 nautical mile round trip and um, the weather's set to be light winds, uh, variable winds, um, so it'd be good, uh, a good test of the sail. It's about 6 in the morning and there's, there's very little wind to start with, so we're, we're motoring. Um, wind picked up uh, enough to put the uh, main engine up, uh, following wind, um, and the wind died down a little bit later on. Which allowed us to uh, to unfold the code zero. 
the bow sprit's already set up and um, the code zero is in its bag just waiting to be hoisted if uh, if needed which it is uh, shortly This is um, summer sailing in North Wales, uh, very clear skies, but uh, makes it very hard to predict what the weather is going to do, and the forecast is a little bit um, ambiguous. Uh, there's a range of winds forecast depending where you, where you look, um, and there's very little in the sky to, uh, to give you any clues beforehand, so it, it pays to be prepared. Um, you can see we're doing about three knots with uh, three and a half knots with the wind on the beam, about eight eight knots um, and we're making good way on the Genoa and, so. and then the, um, the wind dropped off and, uh, and bit around more on the nose so we ended up beating uh, into into the wind you can see our apparent winds, wind speed is six, six knots and we're making three knots so very little wind um, and we're actually flying along uh, it's a lovely sail This is a great shot of the of the Code Zero, the Jack Ross Code Zero. So um, it was designed for Nimbus. Uh, it's got a made from the heaviest spinnaker cloth or the, the lightest sail cloth. Um, so it's very very light but tough, uh, regularly cut. It's got the um, torsion rope sole onto the leech, and we run the halyards back. Spinning spinnaker pulleys, the spinnaker blocks um, right on the stern and run them through to a couple of winches so it's just a, a joy to have this sail up really Now we're tracking out wind here, um, but obviously if we uh, if we were going downwind, we'd run wind on wind with the Genoa unfurled, and we could pull both sails out right at the front of the boat, making it very very stable. Uh, and just just track straight downwind. Yeah, we use the spinnaker pole uh, as a whisker pole for the Genoa. And we'd actually run the sheet of the Code Zero um, through the through the main boom without the main sail um, being hoisted, and that gives us good control over both sails. So the furling control line and the sheets uh, both run back to the cockpit, um, and it's just the spinnaker halyard at the mast. Um, which needs to be dropped to to bring the sail down completely. So it's um, it's very convenient. In these conditions, without the code zero, we'd be barely making any way. Um, we, we'd have to use the um, the engine, which is um, a bone shaking, teeth chattering, twelve horsepower Yanmar bit of engineering which um less is more uh, it's late in the day we're just approaching Aberystwyth we're um, a little bit ahead of schedule um, the winds backed and uh, we're just um, just running into the marina uh, we actually got away a bit for um, 
for a bit more water to negotiate the harbour entrance which is a little bit narrow. Um, Aberystwyth Marina is a bit open, the harbour is a bit open to the um, anything from the west. Uh, it's quite narrow and uh, you get some waves, but uh, it's a great little harbour, very friendly. Uh, here's, a, here's a dog's eye view of getting to the boat, a spaniel's view of um, marinas. Here's Nimbus uh, tied up. We left the um, Code Zero up, uh, even though it's a bit of a tight uh, marina, and Nimbus is not the most uh, agile boat in confined spaces. It doesn't like going backwards. Um, well, she doesn't go back as well so to go backwards most of the time. And here's uh, next morning. Uh, uh, as you know, those little um, morning Sparkles, there's a guarantee you'll see dolphins later. Guaranteed. Uh, we didn't really use the code zero on the way back on the return trip, but um, I'll put some footage in anyway. Uh, you don't want to miss those dolphins, eh? So the uh, further took about half a day to to design and CAD model, um, about a day and a half to make the bits and half a day to fit. Um, the cost, well, the aluminium pole was about twenty pounds. The uh, material nylon was about thirty. The three hundred four uh, exhaust tube was six pounds. Rods and screws and stainless about ten pounds. U bolts twelve pounds. D bolts eight pounds. And the laser cut plates were twenty five pounds for a set of three. Um, and the the code zero itself from Jekylls was about four hundred pounds, which include and also included the um, the torsion rope. So it was uh, a pretty good deal. It's a great sale. So all in all, well worth doing, uh, considering the cost of just the the further unit uh, if you bought one off the shelf. This wasn't really intended as a, a how to how to make video, but um, if you've got any questions, then uh, just leave them in the comments. And uh, I, I do have all the all the drawings for the parts, um, but I pretty much based it on what I had kicking around, um, mainly the the um, the old Furler head pivot um, and the bits of plastic I had. So uh, you know you'd be able to uh, do your own scavenging and uh, make something up to suit your own boat. All right, I uh, will see you next time. Uh, there's been plenty happening on Nimbus in the by way of um, make make and mend so uh, I'm hoping I'll get the time uh, get some time to put up a few videos if uh, if anyone's interested